So let's continue with the math section in Stryver's A to Z DSA course. But before that, hey, welcome back to the channel. I hope you guys are doing extremely well. So the problem that we will be solving today is printing the count of primes for a given range L to R. Now this will be a query based problem. I'm not sure if you have solved a query based problem before this or not. But I'll explain you the problem statement. So you'll be given Q queries. Assume I give you Q equal to 3. Okay. And for every query, I'll be giving you L and R. So imagine for the first query, I give you L as 3, R as 10. For the next query, I give you L as 8, R as 20. For the next time, I might give you L as 1 and R as 5. Now the value of Q can be as large as, they can give you a Q as large as 10 to the power 5 and L and R. So L will always be lesser than R and R can go as big as 10 to the power 6. Okay. So it is already stated. Uh, so these are the constraints of this particular problem. So this, uh, so this is the first query, second query and third query. 3, Q equal to 3 means 3 queries will be given to you. Now your task is to count the number of primes for every query. So for the first query, 3 to 10, how many primes are there? 3 is a prime, 5 is a prime, 7 is a prime. Yeah, there are 3 primes. So you'll be printing 3 in the first line. After that, you have 8 to 20, how many primes are there? 11 is 1, 13 is 1, 17 is 1, 19 is 1. So there are 4 primes, if I'm not wrong. From 1 to 5, 2 is 1, 3 is 1, 5 is 1. 3 primes. This is what you'll have to print. If I have to write down the extreme, like the extreme main solution, what will be that? First of all, I'll be like, okay, I'll be taking the input of K, uh, Q. That is basically the number of queries. Or maybe you'll be given something like a function. Let's assume you're given a function. You're given a function which has a list of integer, comma, integer. And these are queries. So this is what is given to you. So basically, uh, what will be Q? Q will be queries dot size because you'll be getting them in pair. Now what you can do is you can simply run a loop from i equal to 0 till q minus 1 and you can say l will be list of i 0 because in a pair the 0th index will be this r will be list of i of 1 very simple, simple pseudo code again depending on language if it is C++ this will be vector if it is Java, it can be array list or a list. So you have the L, you have the R, and this is for every query, where I is the query number. Now what I can do is, I can simply say, okay, I'll keep a count equal to zero, as if for, I need to count from L to R, right? So I'll run a J loop from L to R, and I'll call the prime function. I'll call the prime function, and I'll ask, hey, is this a prime number. If it is, can you do a counter plus plus? And at the end of the day, I can say print my counter and that will be done. So I can finish the for loop and the function is completed. So every time I can print the count for every query, correct? So what will be the time complexity? I'm very sure that this is B go of Q, right? This is running from L to R. So I can say, R minus L plus 1, where R and L will be varying, multiplied with, there's a prime check. For every number, we can say a number to be N. So for every number, it's a square root of N. It will be varying because J is varying, so I cannot pinpoint the time complexity. But this is somehow, this is what the time complexity will be. And this is uh, something multiplied with something, multiplied with something. So, probably if I have to approximate, it's something to the power Q, in terms of Q. And if I look at, if I look at the numbers, it is 10 to the power 5 and 10 to the power 6. 
something to the power, like maybe if, even if I take 10 to the power 5, if I say all the queries are like 1 comma 10 to the power 6, all the queries are from 1 to 10 to the power 6. In that scenario, this will be taking 10 to the power 6. And this will again be a lot. So that's a lot, right? If I have to approximate this, how much is this? Q at max will be 10 to the power 5. This, R minus L. Imagine all the queries are, all the queries are the extremest queries. In this scenario, this will be taking B go of 10 to the power 6 loop. And this is a square root of N. Now this in itself is such a huge quantity. It's still multiplying a prime chain. So obviously, uh, this is not accepted. Now can I optimize this? I can. One thing I can do is, I can optimize this prime check. And I've already done it in my previous video, where we did learn about sieve, the sieve technique. Maybe I can optimize this prime check to a bigo of one. I can do it. And for that, what I've done is, I've written down a function that gives me the sieve. I've, I've basically taken the value n, and I'm saying create a list, or an array of size this, assign everything as one loop, and then if it is one, mark all its multiples as zero. And once you've done it, return this list. So I can easily get the sieve. I can easily get the sieve. So what I can say is, okay, fine. Maybe I can say prime equal to get sieve. I know that the maximum possible, maximal, maximum possible number is R. And R can be 10 to the power 6. So I'll pass on 10 to the power 6. And it will be returning me an array. An array or a list. And now what I can do is. I can remove this. I'll not be calling the function that checks in square root of n. Instead of it. I'll be simply checking with this array. If this is 1 or not. If this is 1. That means it is a prime. So what I did was. I introduced a n log of log n, where n is 10 to the power 6, because that is the size that I'm looking for. And over here, what I did was q into r minus l plus 1. It is still humongous. What I omitted was just the prime complexity. So this can be termed as a better solution. Now, can I think in the direction of optimizing it? Maybe yes, but for that, we'll be requiring the prefix sum method. So let's move into the optimal solution. So I need to optimize our previous solution. First of all, one thing I know for sure is I cannot optimize Q because if there are Q queries, I'll have to go through them. There's no other way. If I'll have to go through each and every query, I have to print the number of primes. So I cannot optimize Q. What I can optimize is this one. Instead of iterating from L to R, if I can optimize this, I think my job will be done. If I can somehow say, okay, listen, I'm not gonna loop. Can I do some pre-computation so that I can get the answer in B go of one? If I can do that, I'll be able to optimize this. Got it? So that's what we will be trying to do. So in order to understand uh, what I'm trying to do is, we will be taking a value 10. Okay. And I'll be creating a array of size 10. So let's create an array of size 10. So I've taken this uh, array of size. So what I've done is for n equal to 10, I've taken a size of 11 so that I have the 10th index as well. Now this is my array, right? So assume I ask, hey, get seen for 10. So this will be returning me a list and that is this particular list. So it will be filled with 0, 0, 1 because 2 is a prime, 3 is a prime, 5 is a prime, 7 is a prime and everything else will be filled with zeros. Remember the sieve, right? So this is what the current prime array will look like if I call get sieve with the value 10. So we have our sieve array ready. Now this is telling me which number is prime and which number is not prime. Now, if I ask you, till 5, 
how many primes are there? It will be like 3, 2, 3, 5. There are 3 primes. And that is nothing but 1 plus 1 plus 1. So that's what I'll try to do. At the index 5, I will try to store 3, which is the summation of the number of primes till the number 5. Got it? Okay, how can I do it? It's a very simple thing. I will say count equal to 0. And if I go here, this is a 0. I'll add it to count. 0 plus 0 is 0. I'll assign it 0. Perfect. Next, I'll go here. I'll add a 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. So, I'll again assign 0. Next, I'll go here. It's 1. I'll add 1 and that becomes 1. So, count becomes 1. Okay. So, I'll assign 1 to here. Perfect. Next, I'll go here, which is the third index. And I have a 1. So, 1 plus 1 will be 2. And I'll assign 2. Perfect. Next, I'll go here. I have a 0. So, if I add 2 to 0, it will be 2. And I'll add a 2. Next, I'll go here. There's a 1. If I add a 1, that will be 3. Put a 3. Next, I'll go here. It's a 0. So, assign 3. Next, I'll go here. That's a 1. So, this will be 4. Assign 4. Next, I'll go here. That's a 0. So, assign 4. Next, I'll go here, that's a 0, assign 4. Next, I'll go here, that's a 0, assign 4. So, what I've done is, I've assigned the summation. So, at the end of the day, you will be seeing that you have the count ready. Okay, perfect, I have the count ready. Now, if someone is asking me, hey, till 9, how many primes are there? You will be like, okay, prime 9, what is your value? He says, my value is 4. You get the number. Perfect. Amazing, right? So if someone is asking you, how many primes are there? From 3 to 9. Now you know one thing. Prime 9. What's the value? 4. We know it. Till 9, I have 4 primes. Okay? But I need from 3 to 9. Not, because this is nothing but... 1 to 9. Okay. But what do I need? I need from 3 to 9. What do I need? What is the thing that I don't need? That's from 1 to 2. I don't need this. So can I say, figure out prime of 2. Figure out prime of 2. And that will come out to be 1. And do a subtraction because you don't need it. So it will turn out to be 3. And it will turn out to be 3. So can I say, if I do this computation, the answer will be, Prime of R minus prime of L minus 1. Yes, it will be. This will be the answer. Can I write the code? I can. It's going to be super simple. I'll start writing the pseudo code. Again, I'm writing down the pseudo code. This course is not in C++. It is in pseudo code. Spread this across. Function. You'll be given a list of queries. So let's take all the queries. First thing, compute the sieve. So maybe compute this array by calling get sieve. And we know one thing that we will be requiring till 10 to the power 6 because the maximum value of R can be 10 to the power 6. So it will be giving me a sieve. We'll have the prime ready. What is the next thing? Compute. Compute. Do the prefix sum. So maybe I can keep a counter as 0. And what I can do is I can start from 1. Or maybe I can start from 2 because I know the first prime is 2. 2 till 10 to the power 6 because that is the maximum number. And I'll be like, counter is equal to counter plus prime of i. And then you can say, prime of i will be counter. Done. Very simple. Right? So, I have my three computations ready. What is my next thing? I have to go through all the queries. So probably go through all the queries now. I equal to zero till query size. So go through all the queries. Query size minus one because that's the last index. And get the L. L will be queries ith query zero. R will be queries ith query and one. Perfect. Now, what is my answer? What is my answer? The answer is pretty straightforward. Print. I'll require the primes till R. 
and I'll not be requiring the primes till level minus one. So that's my answer. Now understood. Now what is the time complexity? Let's analyze. Get C is working in n logarithmic of log n. Okay. This is doing in b go of 10 to the power 6. Okay. And this is b go of q. So the overall time complexity is b go of n log of log n. Where n is 10 to the power 6. Log of log of 10 to the power 6. Plus b go of 10 to the power 6. Plus b go of q. Q can vary. And the maximum q that you can have is 10 to the power 5. Now we are not multiplying q into n. This is extremely optimized. Now the entire intention of solving this problem was that you understand how to pre-compute, how to use the sieve. They might twist the problem in some other way, but the overall idea is we know that there is a black box, which is in terms of n log of log n, which tells us the primes in the easiest possible manner. This is the black box. Got this? So this will be it for this one. So I hope you have understood this entirely. And if that is the case, please, please do consider giving us a like. And if you're new to our channel, do consider subscribing to us as well. With this, I'll be wrapping up this video. Let's spin in some other video. Till then, bye-bye. Take care. Whenever your heart is broken, don't ever